1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York, ZZ Top, LaGrange, CCR before that. And new live rush started off the program this afternoon. It's Opie and it's Anthony. Hey! And no, we did not get fired. Nah, we're still here. A lot of the faithful listeners actually were scared. They said, are you guys getting fired? You won't be there Monday, will you? Of course, of course we're here. We're here. Back to business. Yeah, and now we can move on with our show. That's it. I had a little distraction last week. Yeah. It's like a gnat that gets in your ear. Or a mosquito when you're sleeping at your grandmom's beach house. <laughs> I can't get him out of my ear. I just want to move on. Yeah, so we move on. Yes, and not that there was a, a lot to talk about on the radio last week. No, thank God nothing really happened, so uh, we didn't miss any news events to talk about. It's no. not like, you know, an old man went into space or anything. Or... Yeah, we didn't really need to comment on John Glenn or the fact no. that the Democrats did really well in the elections and that Newt Gingrich is uh, stepping down and, and Jesse the Body Ventura is now the governor of Minnesota. Really not much going on at all last week, so. No. <laughs> I guess we'll just, you know rehash and talk about stuff you've heard for the past week. They're great. <laughs> Gee, thanks for the evolution. Well, there's not much in the paper today, is there, right? No. Well, we got to talk about the um, the uh, Alzheimer thing. Maybe we could have, they call my name's Bill, call the pharmacy. Yeah, talk about, uh, it's supposed to be nicotine is uh, good for people with Alzheimer's. Yeah. For some reason, stimulates something. So I guess we could talk about that. Talk about that. Also, I do have the life section of uh, the Sunday Newsday, oh, which, yes. as everybody who listens to our show knows, contains the wedding section with the lovely wedding photos of the beautiful couples that have recently gotten married, and we will be playing Ugly, Ugly Bride, Bride today. Cool. For a prize that we don't know of yet. Also, I guess we've got to get into uh, <laughs> Steve Phillips' situation, the GM of the Mets. Oops. I'm sure the fan is on hour, I don't know, 12 discussing it, but <laughs> maybe we could chime in as well. Sure. We Guy should not lose that. his job. Simple as that. Absolutely not. President is allowed to move on with his lovely job, then uh, this is a no-brainer. Let him continue doing exactly what he was doing. It's just so embarrassing for these guys. They're a bunch of dopes tripping over their schweens on the road to success. Now this guy's got to deal with his wife. Mm -hmm. Apologizing in public again. Ugh. But it's, it's, Ugh. A, it's a no-brainer should, what should happen there. He shouldn't even, like, step down for a while. He should just continue doing his job. Good enough for the president. It should be good enough for somebody for, for the head of a, a team that plays a game. It's not like real life, like the president. He gets to keep his job. There you have it. Yeah. All right, we're ready to rock. A little warm-up here. Fax line is 212-957-WNEW. Going to move forward today. Uh, phone line 212-757-1027 if you got something on your mind. And the instant, uh, yeah, instant feedback is working fine. Okay. Working perfectly. The evolution continues. <laughs> Real funny, Opie. W-N-E-W. Get that out of here. <laughs> Smart ass. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York with Creed. What's this life for from my own prison? Their debut CD from the boys from Florida, Sophie and Anthony. Hello. I'm still trying to figure out what that last guy said. That word disgrace to the intelligence of the New Yorker, mm -hmm. and that uh, we are radio's version of the gong show? The gong show. Yeah, that says a little something right there. <laughs> but what does that mean? I don't know. Do we have people come in? And do acts and stuff? And do acts, and then we gong them, and they walk out? Where's Jamie Farr and J.P. Morgan? <laughs> I used to love that show. I, I would consider that a compliment, actually. <laughs> I liked Mean Gene the Dancing Machine. Gene Gene. Oh, I thought it was Mean Gene all these years. Gene Nothing Gene. Nothing mean about him. He was just dancing. No, it was mean about him. He could he could dance. <laughs> he was like, he could jive. You don't have to do the dance, though. So. All right. It's radio. Yeah, the unknown comic. That's right. Thanks, Rick. Remember the unknown comic? Of course. Great career move there. Whatever happened to him? Wasn't he in a few movies? As the unknown comic. Yeah. So no one knew who he was. So the guy's calling us the gong show. All right. I'll buy that. Well, if you want to come in and do your act, you know, <laughs> yeah, come on in. Give Rick a call at 212-757-1027. <laughs> What's going on on the instant feedback? Let's we'll see. Uh, people commenting, welcoming us back, Opie, to the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Likes the uh, Guns N' Roses. Mm -hmm. so we started playing some Guns N' Roses. Well, has anyone noticed the music sounds a little better today? They actually kept you guys. I figured the suits would have downsized you. Keep up the good work, <laughs> Keith. Thank you, Keith. Thanks, Keith. 
Oh, what else are we talking about? Oh, yeah, look at this. Waterboy made $39 million. Now, the critics panned it. Yeah, it's a bad movie. I haven't seen it yet. I like Adam Sandler. I want to check it out. Uh, you know, what do you guys think of uh, Waterboy? Oh, I didn't see it. Yeah. Adam Sandler is now demanding $20 million per movie. Per movie. <laughs> he gets him into the theater, though. Well, he's got that one. It's, he's not very broad in the character. He's got the one character he does. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Because you ever see him on interviews? We interviewed him once. It was horrendous. You ca he didn't talk. Mm -hmm. And I've seen him on other shows, and it wasn't uh, just the show. Uh, he, he's terrible on all of them. He was real stiff. Yeah, I, well, yeah, you know how that is. <laughs> kind of goofy and stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I got the, I got the goofy haircuts. <laughs> you know, how yeah, I miss Chris. I, people like coming to my movies. I, I don't know why. I, you know, yeah, I miss Chris Farley. Yeah, yeah, you know, Chris is a great guy. We we got a lot of fun together. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, come on, where's the where's the funny wacky guy from the movie? I don't know, but he's a movie <laughs> star now. Thirty nine. Now. And the facts are spilling in here. Two one two nine five seven W N E W. Maria writes, Hey guys. One thing, what is this crap with all these guys fooling around on their wives? First the president, now it hits the Mets. When will it end? Tell your listeners, keep it in your pants. I just don't understand, guys. If you can't get a decent from your wife, divorce her and move on. You'll never get a good one until you do. It's it doesn't get easy. any better. Keep up the good work. Not that easy. What do you think, uh, guys, cheat at? <laughs> to get the foreign uh, bod next to them. To get the bod they're not you know, used to. That little thrill, you know, that little the hunt of the chase in, in your uh, breath. Yeah. yeah, and obviously this guy's making a nice dime, mm -hmm. so he doesn't want to give up half of it mm -hmm. if he gets divorced. Guys have to buy the right to sleep with other women, and when you're making a lot of money like this guy, uh, maybe you don't want to get the divorce. You got kids and everything, and maybe he actually loves his wife. And he didn't sexually harass this woman. I know what is going to happen in the end here. They were having a fling on the side. Mm -hmm. He got nervous, decided, you know, I better call, you know, quits to this thing. She got all ticked off and decided that she's going to call, you know, start screaming sexual harassment. Yeah. Simple as that. Guys definitely don't use their best uh, best judgment when uh, they're in, in these affairs. It's horrible. I mean, this guy, he could be screwed. He could lose his job over this. He shouldn't lose his job. The president didn't lose his job. It's a very similar situation. President has uh, set the precedent. Yeah. So this guy should just be able to continue with his job like nothing happened. Oh, he's on TV apologizing to his wife. It's just oh, it's so embarrassing. Just it's ugly, watch. huh? Oh, guys, I, I didn't guys see that are, audio. Guys are stupid. So <laughs> they are stupid. One zero two seven W N E W The Rock of New York Green Day from Nimrod. Time of your life. It's Opie and Anthony. We got a lady on the line here who doesn't like that song for some reason. Hello, N E W. Oh, Rick. Oh. Rick! <laughs> Our producer picks up the call we decided to go live with. Rick. Oh, my God. Rick. Rick. That's why we put her on hold so we could talk to her on the air. Oh. Oh. Can you believe it? Ah. Oh. And he, he he's not listening? He's does not he listen? listening. Does he listen to the show? I don't think he does. Uh, is he listening to Rocky? He put this one on hold. <laughs> Hi, N.E.W. Hi. Hi. What's up, guys? How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Are you the one that doesn't like uh, Green Day? No, it's not that I don't like Green Day. It's just that it, uh, the song is getting played. Time of your life? Yeah. Yeah, but I, I like it still. No, I, it's not a bad song. I have nothing against Green Day, but, you know, they played it out when it was Seinfeld, and then that was a whole new thing, and then ER, and then... Oh. I mean, ER was touching when she sang it. Oh, you know what I mean? Wait, wait, wait. On ER, when Jeannie uh, sang that song, it was very, very sad. Yeah, a tear came to my eye. Yeah, the kid would die of cancer. It was his oh. favorite song. And yeah. you watch those shows. And you the, watch ER. And yes, of course. Yeah, oh. ER is the best show on TV. And then at the memorial, Jeannie sings the song for the kid, and it was very sad. It was oh, touching. yeah, that's and what then, I watch TV for. And then, yeah. they, and then yeah. they rolled the credits, and, you know, a little, I had teary eyeballs. Oh, yeah. Great. It was very touching. Good. That's exactly why I tune in TV and when I. I go home Anthony? to feel miserable. Anthony? What? What's what? the problem? <laughs> I don't. I don't like shows like ER. Okay, I never liked issues, when I was growing up. I never liked watching like Medical Center uh -huh. or Marcus Welby. Oh, I was too young for that. Because it's always like you know. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, your your husband's dying, or your son's dying, or dead, or the car wreck. They gotta go. You know something? Pick your ass up. 
go to the emergency uh, room in the hospital and wait for the real life stuff. Okay, you, you can sit to... there and really get enthralled and teary eyed at a real mom that that's losing a kid or something. Did did. What? You're giving me like a major league self esteem shot in the ass right now. Well, I'm just saying, I don't watch guys. TV for that. I, yeah, like but... NYPD Blue, one of my favorite shows. I watch it because it's a cop show. It's fun. I watched it to watch him, you know, whoa, whoa. shake down some skills in the interrogation. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. And now Bobby's dying. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. ER and NYPD Blue are very similar shows. They're both traumatic. Yeah, but it's fun to, uh, you know, because I would go out with cops and watch him shake down some skills. Okay. okay. I like the interrogation room, NYPD you know. Blue. Hey, yeah, I'll beat your ass. I'll beat your ass. You don't tell me who beat that girl. Yeah, but yeah. I like that. Can but I now Bobby's you? dying. Oh, oh, it's another soap opera. They ruined that show. Can and I then talk? they're bringing Ricky Schroeder in. Can Little Ricky Silver Spoon Schroeder. Can I talk? <laughs> yes, go okay. ahead. You have to realize that NYPD Blue is based in New York. You're going to see scales. You're going to hear Sipowitz going off on people. I love that. But. ER is based in Chicago, where supposedly this real life stuff happens. I, I really have never I'm, seen I'm ER sure like that in my does. life. I'm sure it I'm sure it really does happen. Yeah, I don't want to. I hate case. the medical shows because then all of a sudden I'm I like feel like ooh wait a minute I have a pain in my side. Yeah, but I saw that on ER yesterday. I'm dying. <laughs> I don't need that. That, that. that does go through my head. I'm like a hypochondriac. ER. It's like the woman comes into ER and she's got like problems, a head problem or something, or maybe vision or something. And, and I'm sitting there watching. <laughs> that was happening to me last. Last week, change it. Put, put on Nickelodeon. Put on Nickelodeon. I need the Brady Bunch. At least ER is better than the old series Emergency. Yeah, but I never oh. saw that. I was too young. <laughs> Engine 51, Squad 51. I was too young for that. Guy. Well, the, the, they have it on TV still. They they have reruns of Emergency. Check that it. at least was funny, kind of. That was the early times, though, because I I could watch that. I just couldn't watch Medical Center. There was one guy I remember from Emergency. It was very he was scary. really cute. Uh, Randolph Mantu? I don't. I, who I ended don't, up on soap <laughs> operas? What soap opera was he on? Oh. I don't know. Oh, no. It was one. Yeah. No, was it All My Children or One Life to Live? I think maybe One Life to Live. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell was Rampart? I'm sorry? Was that the hospital? <laughs> Rampart? Rampart. <laughs> Start a IV of ringers. Lactate. <laughs> it's like that's what it would happen no matter what. You Kid stubbed that? his toe. Start an IV of ringers. You know, you sound like John Carter, Anthony. Who? John Carter. John Carter? Yeah. From ER. Well, see, I don't watch the show, so I don't know. See, well, now you know, and knowing is half the battle. I'm a hypochondriac. But I Anthony, watch that Anthony show. does bring up a good point on emergency. They all had the, the same solution to whatever to everything. Emergency it's not was. an IV, right? Yeah. You know what's funny, though? You watch emergency now, and it really uh, brings you up to date on how technology has advanced. Because remember, they used to have to bring out that big briefcase just to talk to the hospital? Mm -hmm. Like, you bring out this big red suitcase, like your uh, grandma's luggage, and he's talking, ha Rampart! A <laughs> Rampart! I got an a, 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 a accident victim! We need bring us lap tape! Yeah, but did and he's you talking see... out of a big suitcase. Now it's like a flip phone. <laughs> Pull out the Star Tag. Hey, Rampart. Yeah, but did What's you up, see man? What are you two... doing tonight? Wait, let me talk. Did you I'm see two weeks you. ago on ER when they gave the horse an enema? No. Nope. Yeah. That's 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 television. That was Comic funny. Believe. That's television. That was hysterical. And then it just you know it goes off on Jerry. Oh yeah, yeah. you could really laugh your ass off at ER at the horse enema in between the kid with leukemia storyline. <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> it, it, it it's, it's painful to watch. <laughs> watch TV to it's for a fun. It's from reality. You don't watch oh. TV to relax. You watch all those uh, you know too hot for TV and the cop show. Oh the cop. I watch Fox on the weekend, man. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta watch Scariest it on police night. chases. Thursday that's, night. that's great. Yeah, but then I, I don't get, they don't build up the character. So I don't care if the guy, like, you know, falls off the bridge. It doesn't matter to me. They you don't know the, the guy the person. who hits the tree, but then they don't, they just go on to the next one. Yeah, it's fun. It's like expendable people. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for calling. Hey, no problem. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. 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 Very good. Well, we found her. There she was. She was a little firecracker. Yeah. Two one two seven five seven one zero two seven. If you want to talk today. Hey, you guys were hysterical on Friday, ripping up Carol Miller, man. <laughs> <laughs> you should replay a tape of that, man. She couldn't come back with anything. No, not really. One of these days, we'll have to play that again. I, I got to tell you, man, it was like you were talking to a tub of water. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she couldn't come back with anything. You guys are great. Well, we exposed. <laughs> you were the best part of that whole stupid special. Well, we exposed uh, a lot of people around here for what they are that's funny. has beens that's that was his dead terrible. weight this whole dead. station's filled with has been <laughs> anchors you should see how they walk around the hallways well, that's right muni can't probably even breathe right do they hey, have them hey, on a hey, ventilator hey, hey. leave muni alone <laughs> even, even we're not that stupid oh come on <laughs> we would love to rebuild this station with a fresh younger scott muni unfortunately uh, we don't get that <laughs>
<laughs> we need to like get some of his DNA and clone him so we get the Muni from like 1967. Yeah, yeah. they broke that mold. They or the broke 70s, that mold. man. The Late 70s. 70s. Him and the groovy Muni with the big pork chop sideburns. <laughs> <laughs> 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York Golden Earring. Eve 6 before that, Inside Out. It's Opie and Anthony. And a lot of people are talking about Steve Phillips, the general manager of the Mets today. He's got a little sexual harassment suit pending, it looks like. Looks like that, uh, he had some consensual sex with an employee. And it looks like she got ticked off and now she's screaming sexual harassment. That's what's bad about that law. That could just happen. I mean, all of a sudden your name is dragged through the mud because both of you decide to um, get a little frisky with each other. Yes. Well, actually, the reason they're in the paper is because one of them decided to end it. <laughs> yeah. I think that's obvious. Well, he's married. Ten years. Two kids. And uh, from his statement he made, it sounds like he's had a couple of these little uh, events. Chris. Yeah. Well, uh, there's a guy in the line here, and he thinks he knows why guys cheat on their wives with oh. someone from work. Well, let's hear. <laughs> Enlighten us. Hold on to your hats. Hi, Annie W. I tell you that if the women were in the f***ing workplace, this wouldn't happen. And they dress like whores. And what do you expect? These guys get horny. And the girls are hornier. So. And they want to climb the corporate ladder. And as soon as everything goes bad, they're crying sexual harassment. It's ridiculous already. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you're saying it's because the girls are dressing like whores. Exactly. And these guys can't control themselves. Could you? Uh, I mean, you're no. a guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but there's a difference. Sure, there's a bunch of uh, ladies around here I'd love to bang, but, you know, that's where it ends. You know? That's where it ends? Yeah, I'm not gonna, what am I going to do? Hey, Anthony, you know, I'll be back in 20 minutes. I'm going to go bang, uh, what's her name? No, it doesn't work like that. It's like, hey, you want to get a couple of drinks for a happy hour? Everybody, my friend works in Wall Street, right? Yeah. They all go out. They, they sexually harass their secretaries the whole day. And if the sec secretary's cool, it's okay. And if, uh, if it's not okay, then she gets upset or she loses her job right away. You know, she's having a bad day. Oh, I'm going to sue the whole office. All right, I think you're going to uh, start something today. Ladies, this guy says that uh, the reason guys cheat on their wives is because, you know, the girls at work are dressed like whores and you can't help yourself. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Watch the phones ring now. <laughs> Woo! That's a bold statement. I don't know. Yikes. Yeah, they're ringing like crazy. Okay, we'll get to you in a second here. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Another track from Tracks, Bruce Springsteen. That one's called Seven Angels. We're playing a lot of those uh, tracks for you here on NEW this week. It's Opie and Anthony. The phones have absolutely exploded. That guy has uh, sparked, uh, hit a nerve, I guess we should say. Yeah, he was saying, uh, he said uh, the reason guys cheat at work is because you girls dress like whores. <laughs> the girls on the workforce. And that, yeah, that's that's basically what he said. Guys can't control themselves. We're obviously talking about Steve Phillips and the mess that is going down in the Mets uh, fr front office. Oops, Just had a little affair. Sexual harassment uh, case that is pending now, it looks like. And we're trying to get to the bottom of why married guys cheat. Simple as that. And <laughs> the guy does call in and say, because first of all, ladies shouldn't be in the work uh yeah, he goes, yeah, it's the women and the women in the workforce, they all dress like whores, and us guys, it drives them crazy. <laughs> that's, that's so wrong. The girls do use it to their advantage in cases like this, I think, uh, the, the case with uh, the Mets GM. It's, I don't know, if you're in a, a relationship with a girl, you know how girls can get sometimes if you break up with them. Right. They go crazy. Yeah. They'll do anything to get back at you. What guy hasn't, uh, in, in some relationship in his life, come out to slash tires or, you know, broken windshield or dead raccoon hanging from your door? Is that just me? Yeah, um, <laughs> actually, no. He just brought back <laughs> some horrible <laughs> memories for me. But it's true. So think about these guys. This guy's got a lot of money. He's a high-profile guy. Mm -hmm. He's having a little uh, relationship with this girl. Calls it off. What's she gonna do? Big cha ching, ching. sexual uh, sexual harassment. Yeah. So you never know. And and you know something? Maybe it's true. Maybe he said, "Hey, baby, I'll get you a better uh, job if you you go to bed with me." But I don't know. I doubt it because his so track his track record's pretty bad because there's a lot of uh, a lot of trysts that he's had yeah. in the past. So oh, well. But everyone wants to comment on this. Let's go to the phones real fast. Hi, Andy W. All right, guys. Listen, love your show. Thank, Thank you. you. 
That guy who was just on the phone is completely out of his mind. <laughs> That's obvious. Well, I mean, you tell me. Just because women dress like whores, does that give us the right to completely lose our minds? Yeah, Not like, like cavemen. We'll just creep up behind them. <laughs> like Quest for Fire. Was that the movie about the caveman and the girl bent over in the cave and he just, like, ran over to her? That's what the like office. That. That's what the office is like these days. <laughs> My wife works down on Wall Street, and i got to tell you something. No matter what it is, she's got people above her, she's got people below her, and everything's changed. There's a whole respect level. If they're talking about the secretaries, that's a different story. Mm. But you know what? Anybody who's fooling around with their secretary, they're going to catch hell for it anyway somewhere along the line. Yeah, it's all going to come down. <laughs> You're right. But it's a shame, though, because this, uh, the whole Mets front office now, is it's already messed up, and it's going to be even worse now than it is. And they need him right now. All these deals are going on, and we don't have our best player. We got, Frank, we got Frank Cashin. You see how old he is? <laughs> they broke him out of retirement to be the, you know, the general manager for a little while? Oh, yeah. my Lord. He's trying to sign Tom Seavers back. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I don't want to make a, to get... He's got a good deal with Cleon Jones. He's, he's trying to work on. <laughs> I don't want you guys to turn into a sports radio program because, you know, there are a bunch of other ones on the radio already. Yeah. You guys are too good at But i got to tell you something. I listen to Howard in the morning, you guys in the afternoon. Who has to worry about music? i got comedy all day long. Hey, thanks all a lot. Right. It's a great thing, guys. Thank Take you. Care. All right. Take care. Well, that guy made some good points there, huh? Yeah. I think we have time for one more. Hi, Annie W. Hey, this isn't a response, especially now after that lady talk. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, it's, it's got nothing to do with just the workplace. It's got to do with that little band most men put on their fingers. When the women get that on their fingers, it's like a chastity belt. Ah. They, they clamp up, man, and then after the children, it even gets worse. And you know the old saying, men don't live by bread alone. So you're saying that uh, guys cheat on their wives because the sex gets uh, worse after marriage. Hell yeah. The women don't want to put out no more. Once they get the, from girlfriend to wife, I don't know what that will happen. It's a complete turnaround. Uh, you know, I've heard that argument from a bunch of guys. That as soon as you get married, you know, count on 50% of your sex life going away. <laughs> yeah, wow. at least. And then after the children, forget about all your sex yeah, life. Yeah, that's what I heard. Is yep. that after you have kids, uh, it really goes down the toilet. Like, you oh, never really, have sex really anymore. That's but it. then, as a man, you're expected to uh, remain faithful. Exactly. So and then how what many do, what men do you, do? you know can remain, remain faithful? You know, men are whatever, men are from Mars, women from Venus. Yeah. Completely different animals. I don't know how the women do it, but a man can't do uh, I, it. I guess a man is expected to just go to that back room at the video store that the curtain's hiding. Oh, yeah, and, right? Uh, yeah. Sure. Use a little loop. Take care of him. Yeah, take care of himself that way. Whatever. Don't work that way. All right, man. Uh, you guys are doing great. Thanks for adding to the discussion. <laughs> okay, take care. Right. Bye bye. This is starting to get interesting. Mm. We need to hear from more ladies, though. 212-757-1027. At PleasurePlate.com, we have an incredible stock of adult toys and videos, and your privacy is guaranteed. You must be 18 years or older to access an order from PleasurePlate.com. <laughs> that hot yeah, tomorrow? that voice sounds hot. <laughs> yum, yum, give me some. Pleasure that. Play. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Christina's in the studio. <laughs> I'm getting a dirty look <laughs> from the person that actually did the voice <laughs> on that spot. But uh, Christina from Promotions ran in. She's been listening to our show down the hallway, and uh, she wants in on this little I discussion. I think that last caller who called in, that guy, he said, you know, the, the woman wants to stop having sex after they get married. I think women have such good reason to not want to have sex after they get married. Uh -oh. The guy has this comfort factor. They get married. They stop showering. They stop shaving. They start sit around farting and scratching between their legs. Who wants to have sex with that? You gotta be kidding me. I mean, you know, it's not the woman here. It's the guy. I mean, women typically when they're 35, 40 years old, they're in their sexual prime. Of course, they're gonna want to have sex with something attractive. <laughs> I mean, Wait, let me write this down. So I should start showering and get shower. Don't some of these fart. Have, like, the no Don hair. Johnson thing isn't happening. No okay. hairs that you could braid. I mean, <laughs> you're kidding me. I mean, give the woman some credit here. You bring up a valid point. A lot of these guys that, that say, you know, hey, I don't understand that the sex is gone. You know, you get the big beer belly. and Come on, the uh, ladies you know, you let stink. themselves go, too, though. Absolutely. Well, you, Come no, on, right. fair is fair. Some right. ladies out there go, oh, I'm married now. I don't have to try as, as hard. And yeah, they yeah, start absolutely. taking dumps in front of you. And while, <laughs> while you're trying to take a shower, you're like, what the hell are you doing? Well, not get out of here. Not 
all women do that. It's mo you have to admit, it's mostly the guys that get this big beer belly. They're out, you know, four nights a week with their with their guy friends watching the Giants game. I mean, I don't know. A lot of women uh, women let themselves go too. Yeah, yeah the Rosie O'Donnell leading their <laughs> ho ho. Rosie and... says it's okay to eat ho hos and get an ass like a tractor trailer. Yeah. Yeah, if you oh, that's another one. Sometimes the women perk up and say. You know, if you really loved me, you it wouldn't matter how fat I got. <laughs> There's a thing in uh, Ann Landers today about that. A woman um, had some back surgery, and uh, uh, all of a sudden she blew up. She wasn't married to this guy, but in a relationship with him. He said, look, you got to lose the weight or I'm going to move on. He's being honest with her because he, can't, he wants to spend his uh, life with a woman that's not a tractor trailer ass. Yeah. <laughs> and that's fine. Well, no, that's a valid point. I mean, that's definitely something you really, if you love somebody enough and you respect that person enough, you're going to actually want to look good for them. Right. You know, it's as simple as that. Or and at so least look as too. as good as you can. Sure. You know, I understand there's some messes out there and there's no help for them, but, <laughs> right. but there's also people that completely let themselves go thinking it's okay. You also, I think a pretty good judge of, you know, judge in the beginning is like, look at the woman's mother or look at the guy's father. Oh, you know, yeah. It really is, believe it or not, it really I is. I always used to look at my girlfriend's judge. mother's. It really is. That my is the key. When you go over the house, girl. you finally go over the girlfriend's house and the mother's like Jabba the Hutt, <laughs> sitting in this big chair eating. <laughs> With oh, rollers, you. rollers in her hand yeah. at the supermarket. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, and the bad thing is, you look at her face real deep through the fat and chins and you're like, <laughs> oh my God! It's my girlfriend. <laughs> it's in the eyes. I see it, but it's her. It's, it's my so girlfriend. True. If she was looking in a funhouse mirror. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so. It's so true. I mean, it's All just right. one of those things—the respect factor. You know. I mean, you want to look good for yourself, also. But sure, right. It, it goes both ways. Yeah. Well, if you don't have the self-esteem to look good for yourself, at least do it for your man. You know. All right. Very good, Christina. Bravo. <laughs> you did a thank fine you. Job. Well, thank you. A little woman's view. We need that on the show from time to time. Oh, and Anytime. she and she drank this in to Aerosmith. This just announced, huh? Uh, December 27th at Continental Airlines Arena. Tickets on sale this Friday through Ticketmaster. That's very cool. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, Anytime, one, why don't you step out so we can look at that cute caboose on the way out? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I got a picture of my mom in my wallet. And check her out. Yeah, can we check out your mom? <laughs> my mom's hot. Well, is she? she totally well, is. Well, Christina's hot, too. So Yeah. Oh, I want to see how hot your mom is. She really is. She's 49. She looks... I was looking at wedding pictures from her over the, over the weekend. Does she, she go? Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, my God. Oh, swear God, this microphone's going to be straight up your butt. Don't, don't, don't ask her that. Don't ask her about my mother. You don't ask her where mother goes. <laughs> what does that mean anyway? Well, she's talking about how hot she is. So, you know, why she Why is. else would I want to know how hot a girl is? Oh. <laughs> you are you know despicable, what? Opie. You know what? I'm going to fly right over this uh, console right here. All right, all right. <laughs> 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York, the latest from Whole Celebrity Skin. Speaking of uh, Courtney Love, I was watching The People vs. Larry Flint this weekend with my brother. I rented that, yeah. Oh, she is so freaking hot in that movie. The slutty Courtney. Little skanko that she is, mm. yeah. Mm -mm -mm. You know what the problem with that movie is, though? What? You're really into the movie and you're starting to believe it, and then Larry Flint plays the judge. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, did. Oh, oh, thanks for taking me right out of the movie. <laughs> my last bailiff for your hamburger segment. When you can't stay up to the bench, I'm, I'm going to have to ask you to settle down. I'm going to have to ask you to settle down. <laughs> Control yeah. your channel, but it's right here. Kind of ruined the credibility factor. Horrible. Yeah. Did, didn't the director say, you know, maybe. Maybe we should just have Larry Flint in a cameo where he's just like sitting on a park bench and and the camera just kind of, you know, goes by him real fast. Yeah. A la like Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. Did you need to give him a talking role in that movie? Kind of wrecked it. And then I watched um, uh, 16 Candles. Haven't seen that movie in a long time. Oh, yeah. Wow. What, what were you doing? Renting from The Evolution? <laughs> the, evo <laughs> yeah, the Evolution of Film. <laughs> With uh, Long Duck Dong. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. And Anthony Michael Hall when he was really funny. Mm. But anyway, all right, we're talking about uh, guys and girls and why guys cheat on their wives and vice versa. It's a pretty uh, good discussion today. Well, it's uh, it's hitting a nerve, that's for sure. You got a good uh, instant feedback, Anthony? Mike, South Brunswick. <laughs> I've been married for five, for five years. Here's how pathetic it gets. Instead of getting together with my friends, drinking, smoking, and getting wild for the jet game, like I did when I was single, 
I spent my Sunday standing with the rest of the schmoes in the electronics department of Stearns while my wife looked for clothes for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you end up. This is very treacherous ground for a guy. Some guys fall into it. And that's it. It's over. They realize that their life uh, is is done for whatever they wanted to do, maybe when they were single. Right. And this is what they're in. They're not happy, but they're not miserable, and that's the way they'll live their life out. Thanks. Other guys uh, want to break away. Yeah. Those are the guys that are vulnerable. If a girl comes up to them, you start feeling like, you know, all dejected. If a girl wants to have sex with you, you're going to be like, this is great. Yeah. This girl likes me. Well, thank God they invented Home Depot. Oh, where we can all go and just... Together and get away for a while and... Mull around by the lumber. And ever since they put the strip clubs in the middle of the Home Depot... <laughs> what? I'm supposed to say Oh, that. sorry. <laughs> yeah, none of the girls know about that. <laughs> I was talking to my buddy Rob uh, two weeks ago. We had to go to Home Depot. And I'm like, wouldn't it be perfect if they opened up a strip club right next to Home Depot? Oh. Then you could just go, yeah, I'm going to Home Depot. I'm going to Home Depot. You got your excuse. Yeah, how long would it take before it's like, well, you don't go to that strip bar <laughs> next to it. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. You just got to hang out with the rest of the guys uh, online <laughs> with your big lumber hanging out of your cart. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, that's a nice door. <laughs> Boy, that fixture looked great outside my door at home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rolling through the aisles. Oh, look at that! A light that turns on when you pull your car into the driveway. Well, we could use that for the, the wife and kids. Yeah. Hey. Oh, look! A ball peen hammer. Excuse me. Could you just smash it over my head? <laughs> Terrible. Your weekends are taken up by doing home improvement projects. Oh. <laughs> what the hell happened? I wanted to go over my friend's house and watch the Jets. Yeah. Drink some beer and have fun. Instead, you're putting in a new doorknob. We're picking out window treatments. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy has some a list of things that you should look for. Or you'll be driving a minivan. All right. I think he's actually abusing you, Anthony. Oh, he is. I think. I have a feeling. Hi, Eddie W. This is a recording. Hello? Hi, Eddie W. Yeah, and a guaranteed path to drive a minivan. Excuse me. Please uh, five cents for the next two minutes. This is a recording. Number one, you lost your browser as a real man to pick up a dead animal with your bare hands. Number two, you vacuum before you come to work. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, you sort of go down with the guys to go pumpkin picking and having a warm cider. Number four, you're going to run a sign spares with your in-laws. <laughs> Number five, you're sequential. You come to a child's place like a sick, inbreeding thing. That when you get wood, when you see a yellow school bus, you're going to drive a minivan. All right. <laughs> All right, you smart ass. <laughs> Come on. He got you. Come on. Like, I'm going to. So what? I didn't pick up the dead cat on my front lawn with my bare hands. That makes me a, a, a guy that's ready to drive a minivan. I could have been rabid. Might have still been alive. But you do have to vacuum before you go to work. I don't vacuum anymore. <laughs> I used to vacuum. For some reason. Because when, when Jen was also working, she felt I had to chip in yeah. with the chores. Yeah. Now that Jen isn't working, she does the vacuum. Oh, I don't yeah. vacuum anymore. So that cancels out two of those. Do you still get wood when you see the school bus? No, and it wasn't when I saw a school bus. For some reason, when I was uh, 13 or 14, going to the junior high, I was on the school bus. Something would happen, and I would uh, get uh, uh, the morning wood on the school bus. <laughs> it doesn't happen anymore. It hasn't happened since I was 14 years old. Okay. So can that. Pumpkin picking and warm cider all was right, all you. All right, all right, That was Opie that did that. Yes, that was me. And uh, uh, the Renaissance Fair with the in-laws? Yes. Yes, okay, I did do that, but I, I sure didn't smile and whistle Dixie doing it, did I? And you're going to the Christmas show. What is that, Aunt? That's oh, in a couple weeks? I was hoping we could just <laughs> move along on this. Yes, yes, my mother-in-law's coming down from Boston with Annie Marg who is, I think, now 97 years old. And she's blind, or mostly blind. And we're going to the goddamn Christmas show at Radio City Music Hall. That should be fun. Yeah. Well, I have to drive up for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and then the day after Thanksgiving, 
me, Jen, <laughs> my mother-in-law, and Annie Marg all have to get in the car and drive uh, back down here. So why can't you guys just have Thanksgiving down here, do the Christmas show, and everything's fine? What, are you stupid? What, are you crazy, Opie? What? Why? That sounds logical. Oh, oh you bastard. What? What? Nothing. Nothing. Fine. Fine. You want to do that? You do it. Fine. Oh, that's what she tells you? Oh. So you got to drive 250 miles. 250 miles. Thanksgiving. Up there. Mm -hmm. Load them all in the car. Drive down for a whole weekend in New York City with my mother-in-law and Annie Marg, who is going to see a Christmas show, and she's blind. <laughs> I could prop a, 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 the Lion King tape in a, a big screen TV in front of her and tell her it's the Christmas show. <laughs> she wouldn't even know. And who's paying for all this? Me. <laughs> Me, Opie. I'll be footing the bill. Isn't that great? That's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. You have fun. <sighs> all right. How to bring that up? Well, the, the caller did. He remembers. Mm. He remembers your hell. Thanks. All right. On the way, we got the doors. You too. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Kenny Wayne Shepherd, somehow, somewhere, some way. You too, before that, from the Joshua Tree. Don't forget, it's another NEW world premiere broadcast. A new release from U2's The Best of 1980 to 1990. Two hours of music and conversation about the rise of U2 during the 80s. It's happening tomorrow night at 10 p.m. right here on The Rock of New York. NEW. We never got to um, Ugly Bride today. I know. Well, uh, you know. Play it tomorrow, I guess. Look at the phones. They're going nuts. I know. We touched a nerve today, talking about relationships and why, you know, um, a lot oh, of relationships go, go south after marriage. Yeah. Actually, in all fairness, we are hearing from a lot of couples that, that are saying that they, their relationships are absolutely fabulous. Great. Still have, yeah, an active sex life to get along. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, but that's kind of boring radio, so I'd, I'd rather listen <laughs> to the guys that, that are miserable and, and try to find out why they're miserable. The guy a little was, more productive than just hearing uh, someone say how great their marriage is. Yeah, the guy that was driving the minivan earlier. Yeah. You know, he used to drive a minted-out T-Bird, he said, <laughs> and now he finds himself just driving a minivan. <laughs> and he doesn't know what happened. It's horrible, and you just can't even look back and go, wait a minute. What happened? I, I was driving a T-Bird. <laughs> And I was banging girls left and right. <laughs> now I'm married, don't have sex. Oh my God, I'm in a minivan. <laughs> How did it happen? Do minivans have great stereo systems? No, it's a big box. Uh, it's just a big box that you get in and... Ugh. I wonder how many people are listening to us right now in their minivans, <laughs> hating us, going, F you guys. Usually can't put anything in the back because there's, there's, there's like a baby car seat mm -hmm. back there and just toys, baby toys. And, ugh, just a mess. All right. Well, Stephanie writes through the fax line, 212-957-WNEW. Opie and Anthony, relationships go to hell after marriage because men insist on marrying women who will make them miserable. Mm. I see lots of fun-loving guys who fall in love with women who don't like their friends, who don't like their lifestyles. The women just want to get them roped in so they can change the guy to the way the woman thinks they should be. Of uh -huh. course, then the man's, uh, of course, then the man's, uh, then the man's miserable and resents the bitch. <laughs> then she decides she's not happy with the way he came out. And the relationship is shot. You want a good relationship? Marry a spirited woman who's happy with her own life and doesn't want to change yours, Stephanie. Interesting. I think when guys uh, get married, um, you, you could get like give a point system to what you like about the girl and why you're marrying her. And, you know, you get along with each other from one to ten. You know, it could be like five or six, seven, just everything else. It, line it up, give it a number. The sex thing is so high on the list. It's like sex. Oh, it's ten. It's a ten. Right ten, now. ten. So it it just it makes everything else. It doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. Like all right, we we get along pretty good. You know, she's she's good cook, kind of. Yeah, man. All sex. Oh, I gotta marry her. Right. And then you get married. She doesn't let me go out with my friends. But the yeah. sex is great. But it's okay. But oh, I don't want to go out with my friends. Sex is great. Sex is great. And then when you get married, a lot of these guys, you find out um. You're not having the sex anymore. So, and then you're stuck with all the other columns that you gave low scores to. Yeah, the the fact that you can't go out with your friends for Monday Night Football anymore. Yeah. The fact you're driving a minivan instead of your Trans Am. Then you're stuck. Oh. The fact that all her friends hate you. And you hate all of them. And you hate all her friends. 
some there is some misery going on out there. Just some misery. We're hearing it. Yeah. Well, we'll go to the phones again in a little bit here. So we're running really late. Yeah. You know what's uh, on the way? We got Metallica doing Turn the Page. Yeah, I want to hear this. If you didn't hear it earlier, it's uh, it's it's cool. It really is cool. So yeah! Stick around for that. I like it. I like it a lot. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. Metallica, their cover of Turn the Page. What do you think, Anthony, huh? I like it. we got to get the boys up here. We've talked to them a few times in the past. Yeah! Very, very cool guys. Don't have Sick. attitudes or egos. Now, uh, that's off the album Garage Incorporated. It's uh, what, it's an album filled with covers, right? Cover tunes. Reading Rolling Stone here. It says uh, 27 tracks of their favorite metal and punk songs. And one by Bob Seger. I guess that would be that one. <laughs> Let's see. Artist songs from renowned tunes by Motorhead, Leonard Skinner, Diamond Head, to medleys of songs by Black Sabbath, Blue Eyes to Cult, and the blood-spitting metal band Merciful Fate. Neat. Yeah. Cool. Well, I like that a lot. Yeah. We will not be smashing that one. I will carefully place it over here. <laughs> yes, do that. We need a little more of that on our radio show. Yeah, we could use a little more of that. Just Just a little tweaking little. up a little bit. Actually, the music sounded great today. Yeah. If you notice, we tweaked it a little bit. I hope you're enjoying it. Just a little tweaking going on. I am. I'm enjoying it. Okay, very good. Well, the phones are still ringing like crazy. Talk about relationships today. <laughs> Look at the time. I know. <laughs> we'll let Matt start showing a little bit, little bit here. Mm-hmm. Hi, N.E.W. Hey, how's it going, boys? What's All on? right. Listen, I want to call on the flip side of this whole thing here. Yeah, hit it. All right, listen, I'm 22 years old. I'm making excellent money. I'm with a new girl every night. I got my little sports car, my motorcycle. What the hell would I want to get married for? Oh, how does it feel? Oh, it's uh... excellent. Whoa, that's a, that's a marriage. And then she sums it up. In a good relationship, both people get into what the other enjoys, and there's no need to look outside the marriage for anything. You guys are great. Keep it up, Chrissy. What do the friends do? <sighs> that they, they invite over. I don't know. Watch. I don't know. Maybe they go outside and toss the ball around while she, she gives them the... <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm gonna... uh, this is just another side of it. Oh. So a lot of little stories today. Wow. Heard a lot of little uh, takes on marriage and relationships. And today. she gives him a mm, oh, during oh, halftime. Oh. That's fabulous. That's a, every guy's dream come true. Well, during the game. <sighs> That's great. Okay. <laughs> you all right? <laughs> You're just thinking about that, wow, huh? Wow, yeah. Where are we? She's perfect. Oh, we're in a radio station. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. Ah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Time to end the show. Yeah, that's that's a good note. We'll end with that. Chrissy, yeah. God loves you, man. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll have to get to Ugly Bride tomorrow. Yeah. I saved the page and everything. Actually, I wanted to do a, a new thing today, too, because Anthony is the king of trivia. And I know a lot of shows, you know, they do trivia and it's kind of boring stuff, but we figured we'd try something. Anthony knows pretty much everything about the Brady Bunch. Yeah, I'm a fag. And I wanted to see how many questions you could get in a row before someone stumps you. And we were going to give out prizes and stuff, but we went down another road today. So mm. maybe we'll do that tomorrow as well. Yeah, we could do that. All right, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Matt Devotee's up next. Matt, you got cool tunes tonight? Hey, what year are we up to in the special? Uh, oh, you, you had to shut say, up with the special. Shut up.